let us all bow down for a word of prayer loving heavenly father we come into your awesome presence lord thank you for giving us this wonderful time of worship and the english service lord lord when we start worshiping you let us feel your presence you be with us you you speak to us lord you have given us the grace the mercy all through this week to seek you lord let us find peace and comfort in your presence lord we give the time of word into your presence lord you take complete control of us bless each and every every one of us lord bless each and every one of us who's watching this english service lord we give everything into your presence in jesus name we pray amen 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 can we all sing the song as we gather in this place today holy spirit come and have your way Oh, oh. 
worship you Lord we long to see your face Lord we long to hear your voice Lord we are eager to know what you are going to talk to us Lord we are so eager to walk with you Lord as we read in the Bible many many prophets and many men of God they walked with God God can we also can we also ask him God give us such kind of life Lord like we walking as a friend walking as a companion every time we come to you in, on our knees Lord give us a wonderful time of worship let us be filled with your glory and power every time we come to, come to you on our knees lord every time you speak to us lord we long to seek you lord we long to hear your voice this is your house lord you dwell in us lord can we all ask god you dwell in us You be our companion, Lord. You be our friend, Lord. We give you glory. We give you honor, Lord. You only are worthy to be praised, Lord. Every time we worship you, let us let us come a bit closer to you, Lord. You draw us closer, Lord. Oh, Santa in the 
into your mighty hands, Lord. Speak to us, Lord. We give the time of worship into your complete control, Lord. Let us feel this presence and take your glory wherever we go this whole week, Lord. You be with us. You guide us. You be our support, Lord. Let us seek you each and every day, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I greet you all in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, I believe this morning God has a very special word for each and every one of us. 
uh, for God's word this morning, let's turn our Bibles to the book of Jonah. When we hear the word Jonah, we think of many things. Uh, we think of the great fish. We think of the great city, the city of Nineveh. We think about the disobedient prophet. Though there are uh, repetitively, uh, these words are used in these four chapters. You should all understand that the book of Jonah is all about God. And it's said that the word God has been used more than 38 times. So it's just all about God. Uh, how God went behind his disobedient servant and made him to obey him. And how God had mercy on the disobedient people of Nineveh. It was all about God. So before we hear from God's word, shall we just bow our heads for a word of prayer? Loving Lord, we thank you for this beautiful morning day that you have given us. Lord, even as we are here in your presence, Father, we pray that you will speak to our hearts. Lord, you will quieten our hearts and you will tune our hearts to listen to your voice and you will give us the grace to obey it and to look for your glory. We pray all this in Jesus' much less name. Amen. Uh, we will turn our Bibles to the book of Jonah, chapter 1, uh, verses 1 to 3. I read, I'm reading it from the New King James Version. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. The first chapter of Jonah talks about the rebellion of Jonah. Uh, Jonah was, is identified as a prophet. We read about him elsewhere in the Old Testament as well. He was a very powerful man of God. Many of his prophecies came true. So people had a very high, high regard of Jonah. But here was Jonah with a very definite word from God that we see that he failed to obey God's word. And the word of God says he flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He was moving in a geographically opposite direction, but deep down in his heart, he always knew as a prophet of God, he could never escape the presence of God. Because we read in Psalm 139, Lord, wherever you may go, even if I go to the depths of the earth, even there you are with me. You know, even darkness is as light to you. That's what the psalmist says. Deep down in his heart, he always knew he, he could never run from the presence of the Lord, but still then he didn't want to obey God's will. So the first chapter of Jonah talks about his rebellion. There are times in our lives we receive definite word from God, uh, definite commands to obey, you know, uh, definite commands to set our priorities right, uh, definite commands to seek the Lord. Maybe as in the prime time of our lives, early in the morning, or, or to you know uh, discipline our spiritual life, or to there are many things that God specifically talks to us to love one of our neighbors, maybe against whom we are harboring resentment and bitterness deep within. Maybe there are people around you whom you are not able to forgive. There are things you are not able to leave. You know in your heart, deep brother, what is it, that specific command that you are listening from God or that you listened to from God very recently? And how has your heart responded to it? Has it responded to it as a good soil, you know, uh, which is ready to receive God's word, which trembles at, at, at God's word and obeys it? Or are you like prophet Jonah who rebelled it? We'll just see, you know, uh, what went wrong with Jonah. What caused him to rebel? Because we are introduced to Jonah as a prophet of God. So he's, he was a prophet. But at the end of uh, chapter 1, we see him as a rebel. How did this prophet become a rebel? What was the, you know, so even in the word of God, we read, he went down to Joppa. He went down into the ship. So physically he would have gone down or geographically he would have gone down, but he was going down in his spiritual life too. He went, he tried to run away from God. What was, what were the reasons that took him down? Um, we, the first three verses I read it to you. When Jonah had a specific uh, command from God, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for the wickedness has come before me, he chose otherwise. You know, you know why? He had a very wrong attitude towards God's will. For him, the people of Nineveh uh, 
were not a very good people. You know, they had uh, tormented the people of Israel. They had tortured the people of Israel. So the people of Nineveh were very bad. So he had a very, uh, you know, narrow sense of patriotism towards, towards his country. These people of Nineveh, the Assyrians, who have so badly treated Israel, how can they find salvation? How can they be, they become a part of God's love and mercy? You know, it was, he couldn't, you know, uh, he just couldn't understand that. He couldn't come come in terms to that point. So his narrow sense of patriotism had a precedence over God's love. He never understood that God's will included him as well as the people of Nineveh. He never understood that God's will is full of God's love. And because of his wrong attitude towards God's will, he just didn't feel like obeying God's will. No, um, he never understood that God's will is an expression of God's love. Even in our lives, maybe what God wants us to do, you know, our every fiber of our being might rebel. How can I forgive that person? Or uh, how can I do this? How can I leave this? We might think like that. But this morning, we, we should understand that we need to have a right attitude towards God's will. If our attitude towards God's will is not proper, we will also go down in our spiritual life. If you look at the life of Jesus, we read in John chapter 4, verse 34, he says, doing the will of God is my food. While talking to the Samaritan woman, the disciples bring food and ask him, we eat. And when he says he's already had it, Jesus tells the statement. That's a beautiful statement in John chapter 4, verse 34. He says, that is my food. That is nourishment. As children of God, doing God's will should be our nourishment. If we nurture a wrong attitude towards God's will, we end up becoming rebels. We will not be prophets and priests and kings as God has ordained us to become. We end up becoming rebels. So here was Jesus who had, for whom doing God's will was an essential nourishment to his body. But we see Jonah doing God's will was a difficult pill for him, for him to swallow. It was like a medicine that could not go down his throat. How is God's will to you this morning? When God gives you a command, how is your response? Is it, are you willingly doing it? Like Jesus for whom it was a nourishment. If you read in John 7, 17, Jesus says, if you do my will, you know, that gives you enlightenment. And in Hebrews 13, uh, 21, we read, when you do God's will, that is a divine enablement. So doing God's will uh, is a nourishment. It gives you enlightenment. It gives you divine enablement when you are a child of God. But here was Jonah, an identified and a very powerful prophet of God. When God's word came to him, his attitude towards God's will for the people of Nineveh was very wrong. He didn't want them to receive salvation. Uh, he didn't want them to experience love of God. He failed to understand that God's will includes everybody. He failed to understand that God's will is an expression of his love. That was the first mistake he did. The second mistake uh, Jonah did was, he had a very wrong attitude towards God's word. God's word came to Jonah, arise, go. Verse, that is verse 2. Verse 3 says, But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Jonah thought when God's word came to him, he had two options, either to accept it or to leave it. But as children of God, you and I need to know when God's word comes to you, there's just one way to accept it and to obey it. No, Jonah had a very wrong attitude, not only towards God's will, he had a very wrong attitude towards God's word too. This morning, how have you responded to God's word that has come to you? Maybe when you read your Bible this morning or when you read your Bible sometime yesterday, when you listened to a sermon yesterday, you if you have felt you know, oh, God's hand moving in your life, if you have listened to God's sweet voice telling you to do something or not to do something, what is your response? Do you think that, it, that there is a choice involved in that? Definitely not. There is no choice. There is, neither, there is never a choice of taking it or leaving it. My sheep hear my voice. That's what Jesus says. If you are his sheep, 
you will hear his voice and you will obey him. Jonah forgot that it was a privilege to be a prophet of God. It was a privilege to know God's will. It was a privilege to hear God's word. Jonah forgot all that, you know. Uh, Jesus says in Luke chapter 6 and verse 46, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, but you do not do the things that I say? God's word demands obedience. He is a God who looks upon people who tremble at his word. Jonah the prophet became Jonah the rebel by the end of this chapter. The first reason is because he had a very wrong attitude towards God's will. He never had a full picture of God and his heart towards the people of the world. Number two, he had a very wrong attitude towards God's word. God's word demands complete obedience. And the third mistake Jonah did was, Jonah had a very wrong attitude towards his circumstance. See, in his disobedience, these were the cause for his disobedience. So he, God's word came to him, arise, go to Nineveh. So he arose, then he comes to the port, okay, uh, the harbor, and he finds a ship ready to sail to Tarshish. So when he came to the port, he didn't, he, he didn't look out for a ship that had to go to Nineveh. There was a ship ready to go to Joppa, to Tarshish. The first circumstance. The next thing, he had enough money to pay for his entire travel fare. Yes, he paid, he got in. And the third circumstance, he got in and he fell into a deep sleep. Undisturbed sleep, undisturbed even by the terrible storm that, that, that was outside. There are times in our lives, when we look at the favorable circumstances around us, we think it's fine. Because circumstances are favoring Maybe I'm part of God's plan or maybe I'm not disobeying, but we should never be deceived. You know, Jonah thought all his favorable circumstances were favoring him, favoring his act of disobedience. But he never knew amidst all this behind the scenes, God and all his providence was preparing something big, preparing a big shock for Jonah. God was preparing to teach Jonah a lesson. Uh, dear children of God, we should always be very careful. Our attitudes towards circumstances is very important. Jonah had a very wrong attitude. When he thought everything was ready, a ready ship, money in hand and a deep sleep, when every circumstance was favoring him, uh, he never entertained a, you know, a guilty conscience. He could sleep even, am even amidst all those disobedience. Similarly, when every circumstance seems to go against what God has told you, just stand. That's what Abraham did. God said, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as numerous as the sand in the seashore. Maybe every day, uh, Abraham would have you know, thought his house would, have, would be full of children. Or I don't know what he would have imagined. But every passing day was a painful reminder. Every passing day was, you know, was very tough for Abraham to spend. But then we read in Romans chapter 4 that, you know, he knew his body was as good as dead. He knew Sarah's womb was dead. But without weakening in his faith, he faced these facts. You know why? And you know how? Because, you know, he knew, he was convinced that God had power to perform what he had promised. You know, that, that, is the, uh, that is the drive from within that helps you to trust God even when circumstances are not favorable. We should always understand our attitude towards circumstances counts. Jonah thought because he was surrounded by favorable circumstances, he never gave you know, even a slightest thought about his disobedience. Nothing seemed to haunt him. But you and I as children of God, even if the circumstances go against us, if we hold on to God's word, being fully convinced that God has power to perform what he has promised, like Abraham, we will never waver in our faith. We will, our faith will never be weakened. So here was this man, Jonah the prophet, who disobeyed God's you know, clear call, who disobeyed God's plan for his life, who turned out to become Jonah the rebel. 
You know, why? Because of his wrong attitude towards God's will, because of his wrong attitude towards God's word, and because of his wrong attitude towards the circumstances around him. Then we, if you read from uh, verses 4 to 10, we read the whole thing, you know, the storm at the sea. Now Jonah, he becomes a curse instead of a blessing. So in his rebellion, whole of chapter 1 talks about the rebellion of Jonah. So the first three were specific, specifically talked about Jonah's disobedience. And verses 4 to 10 talks about the storm at the sea. Uh, if you look at these verses, you will see that uh, in his rebellious path, Jonah lost four important things. Jonah lost four important things. Jonah the prophet started off as a prophet, going to end, is going to end up as a rebel. You know, in this process, he lost four things. We'll just look at it. Uh, verse 4. But Jonah sent out a great, but the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to be broken. The first thing Jonah lost was he lost the voice of God. All the circumstances were favoring him. You know, uh, Jonah got into the ship, paid the fare, slept peacefully. But then God was at the back. In all his providence, he was preparing something big for Jonah. God wanted to, you know, teach Jonah a lesson. He did not speak to Jonah any further through his words. Rather, he spoke to Jonah through his works. We see here the wind, the sea, the tempest, you know, rain, thunder. Everything obeyed God. All his creations obeyed God. God wanted to teach Jonah a lesson through all his creations. Jo the first thing Jonah lost was Jonah lost God's word. Now God was dealing with Jonah only through his works. Now, what, is, what a pathetic plight, right? Except God's servant, every creation of God obeyed him. Rain, thunder, wind, storm. You name it, everything obeyed God, except this one disobedient prophet. The first thing Jonah lost was he lost God's voice. Then when we see verse 5, Then the mariners were afraid, and every man cried out to his God, and threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down into the lowest parts of the ship, had lain down, and was fast asleep. What was Jonah doing amidst the tempest? He was fast asleep. The second thing Jonah lost was he lost his spiritual energy. He was a prophet called to help people when they are in need. So here is a group of pagan crew, pagan sailors who are struggling for their life. There is a big tempest. They are trying to throw down their cargo. They want to save their lives. And here was the prophet Nicely sleeping. There's one beautiful verse I like in verse 6. So captain came to him and said, What do you mean, sleeper? Arise. You know, there's another version which says, How can you sleep? When you lose your spiritual energy, we will sleep. When the world will need you to be on your knees, you'll be sleeping. Children of God, we need to understand when we are disobeying God, we are down, we are down in our spiritual life, we go down, our attitudes become wrong, we cannot hear the voice of God and we will lose the spiritual energy it takes to stand in the gap. You know when uh, Esther sent dresses and all to Mordecai, Mordecai sent the written edict that was published in Susa about the destruction of the Jews. Uh, when again Esther told her state that she cannot go to the king, you know, Mordecai said, if you remain silent, it's like, how can you remain silent? That's exactly what the captain of the ship asked Jonah. How can you sleep? Just think, just look into your own lives. The world around us is perishing and God is counting on us, the children of God, to stand in the gap and to intercede for God's divine intervention, for his healing hand and uh, his merciful hands to be upon our land. Are we found sleeping? 
have we lost our spiritual energy if we have lost our spiritual energy it means we are we are in the path of disobedience we are out there becoming a rebel where are we and the third thing jona lost was he lost his power in prayer see here in verse 6 um the captain says arise call on your god perhaps your god will consider us so that we may not perish there was a big prayer time going out there every man calling out to his own gods but here we see jona unable even to pray though he was a prophet he could not pray we read in psalm 66 18 if i regard iniquity in my heart the lord will not hear me uh, there are times uh, we feel very distant from god you know it is our sins that stand as wall between us you know it's our sins that block us you know from having a very clear passage from calling uh, calling out to god for reaching out to him in times of our need he is available but we are not available we are not ready to get the blessings that he has to bestow on us because the our sins have separated us from god so the third thing jona lost was he lost his power in prayer or the fourth thing jona lost was he lost his testimony you know see here uh, if you read from verse uh, 7 to 10 they are casting lots to find out who brought the trouble to find out who the culprit was and you know by divine providence the lot falls on jona then they ask jona please tell us what's well, why have you brought this trouble upon us and jona narrates you know he very beautifully says we read verse 9 so he said to them i am a hebrew and i fear the lord the god of heaven who made the sea and the dry land his picture of god was very clear i am a hebrew and i fear the lord the god of heaven who made the sea and dry land then he explains to them that my god wanted me to go to nineveh but here i am on my way to tarshish because i because i didn't want i want i just disobeyed blatantly i disobeyed was then the men were exceedingly afraid and said why have you done this for the men knew that he fled from the presence of the lord because he had told them the second question they ask is why have you done this just imagine we are children of god and we have the pagan world around us if ever uh, they need salvation they need health they need healing they need divine redemption but how many of us are like prophet jona running away from god's plan for our lives you know the first thing they will ask you is how can you sleep we are perishing how can you sleep the second question the pagan world will ask the churches why have you done this how come you had the courage to run from the presence of the lord how come you had the courage to distance yourself from the commandment which your god has given you that's the second question the pagan world will ask the church the pagan world will ask the children of god what is our answer what is our answer you know uh, and they are asking what shall we do to you that the sea may be calm for us and then the story goes on see we as children of god you are called to be a source of blessing when god called abraham he said in your name i will bless everybody so every jew was supposed to be a source of blessing and every time in the old testament we read a jew fell short of god's glory a jew you know disobeyed god he brought curse not only to his people but also to not only to himself but also to the people around him we read in genesis there are there are two places when abraham lied and abraham lied for his own sake no it brought problems not only to himself but also to the people around him we read about achan he lied and because of him the whole israelite army they were defeated here was one man jona a jew the uh, the word you know jona means dove you know dove symbolizes peace right it says jona son of amitai amitai the word amitai in hebrew means faithful truthful you know in jewish custom the names were kept with the, you know great meaning they were not supposed to be misnomers they were supposed to live up to their names we know jesus was called eshua because he brought salvation you look at every name you know every name had a meaning and people were supposed to live up to them here was a jew whose name was peace whose father's name was faithful who was supposed to be a, a blessing wherever he was 
But when his name was picked as the culprit, just imagine, here stood a Jew who had become a source of curse to the pagan sailor, sailors here in the port. Where are we? How are we? Are we a source of blessing to the people around us? Are we a channel of God's grace and mercy to the people around us who are perishing, who are suffering? Or are we standing as culprits with heads, you know, hanging down like Jonah telling, I am the culprit, I am running away from God's presence. And they will ask us, how can you sleep? They will ask us, you know, why have you done this? What is up like this morning, children of God? May the Lord give us grace never to run from His will, never to be disobedient to His plan, never to nurture a wrong attitude towards His will, towards His word, towards the circumstances that we face. And may we never lose, you know, Jonah lost four things we said. He lost the voice of God. He lost his spiritual energy. He lost the power in his prayer. And then he lost his testimony. Everything was lost. And then we, if you read from verses 11 to 17, you know, we see the plight of Jonah. Jonah is thrown into the sea. Now, Jonah started off as a prophet. Didn't even live up to his name as a Jew was not a blessing, he was a curse. And now he becomes a rebel, suffering for his sin. And he finds himself in the belly of a fish in which God prepared for him. And then if you read in chapter 2, chapter 1 talks a whole of his rebellion and chapter 2 talks about his repentance. Even in our lives, maybe this morning you find yourselves very far from God. Maybe you think you've not responded to God's will and God's word in the right, in the way that he demands of us. Maybe we are out there standing as culprits, you know, uh, down onto a spiritual slumber, you know, uh, not knowing what you're actually doing, not understanding our responsibility that we have towards the perishing multitude that are around us. If we are caught uh, in our sins, like Jonah, the rebel, there is still a way out for us. In Jonah chapter 2, we see the path of repentance in Jonah's life. You know, out there, he finds himself when he was thrown out from the boat, from the ship. You know, the tempest subsided, but as he went down the waters, you know, several fearful thoughts would have come into his mind. He would have thought it was better to go to Nineveh than to land up in the sea. It's better to go up to Nineveh than to die like this. Maybe then when he opens his eyes, he finds inside, finds himself inside the belly of a fish. And there he kneels down and he prays to his God. Many times in our lives, we use prayer as a spare wheel, but it's never a steering wheel. The man who had lost his power in prayer, the man who had lost his spiritual energy was on his way back. Our God is a God of second chances. This morning, if you're very far from God, it's time we turn a new leaf in our lives. It's time we repent. It's time we trace back our path. He had come down a long way down from his relationship with God, uh, from a prophet to becoming a rebel. Now he's tracing his way back again to God, to once more, to regain his lost spiritual energy, to regain the lost voice of God, you know, to regain the power in his prayer. Uh, to regain his testimony, he kneels down in the belly of the fish. This morning, that's our only way out. All our problems, we have the solution on our knees. And on his knees, you know, verse 1 and 2, if you read, he prays for God's help. Jonah prays for God's help. He cries out to God in his affliction. He's afraid. He's now put into that point, you know, there is a time when God just hems you in because he loves you so much. You know, he wants you to, oh, he draws you with his uh, cords of eternal love. He draws you to himself and he gives you another chance. That's what he did to Peter. That's what he did to many of his saints. You know, he gives you another chance. And here is Jonah praying for God's help. Then in verse 3, if you read, he accepts God's discipline. He says, you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas and the floods surrounded me. All your billows and your waves passed over me. I know this is a hand of discipline and Lord, I submit to it. I accept it. It's my rebellion that has wrought this condition for me. He accepted God's discipline. If you read verses 4 to 7, he trusted on God's promises. You know, earlier he had a very wrong attitude towards God's word and God's will. And here he talks about, you know, uh, um, 
God's promises. He says, Lord, I trust you. You can uh, read that later, verses 4 to 7. I will look again toward your holy temple. Uh, I have I've been cast out of your sight, but I know it's in, from your holy temple that my help will come from. He trusts on God's promises and on God's providence. In verse 8 and 9, if you read, he yields himself to God's will. And he yields himself to God's perfect will in his life. This morning, even when if we are very far from God's word, you know, uh, uh, God's command, this is the path of repentance. Go to him. Cry for help. Lord, it's only you who can save me. Verses uh, 1 and 2. I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol, I cried and you heard my voice. He's just crying out for help. In times of, you know, uh, distress, where do you turn to? In times of tremendous trouble, where do you turn to? It's only when you turn to the Lord that we find help, that we find mercy in times of our need. Uh, there's a very beautiful uh, incident in Jesus' life, you know, when John the Baptist was beheaded by King Herod. It says in uh, um, his disciples, the head was gone. It was taken on a platter by Herod's daughter. John's disciple took the body. They buried it. They went and told Jesus. That's a lovely verse that I love. There are times in our lives you may walk through difficult times in your spiritual life, maybe in your physical life, in your family life or whatever. In tough times, turn to God because he is a very present help in times of trouble. However far you may go, he is our refuge. He is our strength. Look to him. Jonah knew it. In his, As he traced back his you know, path, he has to go up now. He has come down a lot. The first step was he went to God. He accepted God's discipline, we said. And verse 4 to 7, he trusted God's promises. Earlier he had thought when God's word comes, he can either take it or leave it. He thought it was optional. But now deep down he knew he was a sheep that had gone astray because my sheep hear my voice. He says, Lord, I look to you. I trust on your promises. I'm clinging on to them. And finally, he says, Lord, I yield myself. I know every fiber of my being rebelled against your will when you wanted to bring salvation to Assyrians, when you wanted to bring salvation to that great city of Nineveh. But now I just want a way out. I yield myself to you. And then the Lord ordered the fish to spit out Jonah. We read that in verse 10. So the Lord spoke to the fish and it vomited Jonah onto the dry land. And the dry land was the land of Nineveh. There was redemption. This morning, even if you are a rebel, there is always repentance with God. You can always repent for your sins. And then there is a God who will redeem you. However far you would have gone, he can draw you back closer to him with his eternal gods of love. And he can redeem you. He's just waiting for you. Uh, but there's this one very important lesson that you and I need to learn. For Jonah, you know, God's will was the last resort. He had to, he just submitted to God's will. There are many more lessons that he'll be learning in chapters 3 and 4. He just submitted to God's will as the last resort. But you and I as children of God, if we need to experience all the abundance that God has in store for us, you know, obeying God's will should become our daily way of life. As we said earlier, obeying God's will should become our nourishment. Obeying God's will should become our enlightenment. And obeying God's will should become our divine enablement. That should never become the last resort to which we will be pushed to. But it should be a definite daily choice that we make to live by. It's only then that we can experience the abundant blessings that God has for us. And we will be a channel of blessing to everybody around us. And that's indeed God's intended purpose for our lives. Shall we look to the Lord in prayer? Loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this beautiful morning time that you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for the life of Jonah. Lord, he started off his career as a prophet. But Lord, one morning when he received a word from you to pass on uh, the message of salvation to the people of Nineveh, Lord, 
he had a very wrong attitude towards your will he could never understand your love behind your will he had a very wrong attitude towards your word and he had a very wrong attitude towards his circumstance and he ended up disobeying you he never understood that he can never run away from your presence though he was geographically moving very far from your intended destination for him lord he could never run away from your presence you in all your providence you had planned something great to bring back your disobedient servant lord even in our lives there are times of oh father when we receive your word lord we think obedience is an option but this morning we pray that you will impress in our hearts of oh father that obeying you is never an option of oh father my sheep hear my voice lord we want to be your sheep we want to lend our ears to the voice of the good shepherd of oh father lord we want to live our lives in complete obedience to your will or even as jesus said father doing your will has to become our nourishment of oh father doing your will should never become the last resort to which we should be pushed to lord jesus doing your will should be our enlightenment it should be our divine enablement oh father help us lord to willingly and voluntarily and consciously choose to obey you because you are a god whose eyes are upon those who tremble at your word oh father lord john started off as a prophet But Lord, he didn't even fulfill the role of an ordinary Jew of being a blessing to the people around him. Oh Father, Lord, he lost many things. He lost your voice, Oh Father. Lord, we don't want to be pushed into that state, Oh Father. Lord, we want to walk very close with you, Master. We want to walk in step with you in our spirit, Oh Father. Lord, we want to hear your heartbeat, Lord Jesus. Lord, we want to respond to you, Lord, every time you speak to us, Oh Father. Lord we don't want to lose your voice oh father Lord we don't want to lose our spiritual energy oh father Lord we don't want the pagan world around us to question us how can you sleep how did you do this why did you disobey your god we don't want the pagan world to point fingers at us oh father Lord we don't want to be spiritually complacent oh father this morning we pray oh father that you will awaken us oh master how long will you sleep who you lazy man we need in uh, a proverb so father a little sleep a little slumber and poverty will come upon you like a bandit we need of oh father lord we pray that you will awaken us from our spiritual slumber of oh father lord we pray that you will replenish our spiritual energy of oh father you are the mine and the other branches teach us lord to remain in you to draw lord all the energy that we need of oh master we don't want to lose our spiritual energy lord we don't want to lose our power in prayer of oh father Lord we want to stand on our knees and Lord cling on to your promises and Lord to receive in faith all that you have for us oh father Lord this morning oh father we don't want to lose our testimony lord you have made us channels of blessings we don't want to be a curse to people around us here was Jonah not even fulfilling the role of an ordinary Jew lord he was a curse to the pagan sailors in the boat of oh father lord we pray this morning if we had lost our testimony we pray that you will forgive us oh father i pray for uh, people lord who are uh, maybe who have rebelled against you and who are suffering for their sins suffering because of their sins father this morning we pray lord that you will bring all your children back to your fold into a path of repentance oh father lord let them turn back to you lord jesus Lord, let them come back to you, Lord. Let them retrace their paths, O oh Father. Lord, I pray, let them regain their lost first love, O oh Father. We pray that you will fan into flame, Lord, their love for you, Lord Jesus, so that they'll draw more closer to you and they will burn brighter for you, Lord Jesus. Lord, you're a God who will never snuff out a flickering light, O oh Father. Lord, you will never break, Lord, a bruised reed, O oh Father. Lord, a smothering wick you will not snuff out. We pray this morning that you will strengthen us. You will, uh, you will help us to trace our back path back to you, Lord. Lord, to repent, to cry to you for help, Lord, to accept your hand of discipline, O oh Father, to trust your promises, O oh Father, and to yield ourselves to your will, O oh Father. And Lord, because when we come back to you, you are a God of second chances, O oh Father. You redeem us, O oh Father. Uh, Lord, you make us stand in your presence, O oh Father. We thank you, Lord. Help us, Lord, to. stand in your presence redeemed oh father ready to do your will oh father submitted to your plans oh father lord to obey you never to disobey you and lord to be a channel of blessing to everyone around us oh father lord we pray all this in jesus much name amen